gentlemen, welcome. This is a long time in the making. I'm here uh, fishing a small creek south of Buffalo. It's actually one of the very first rivers I ever fished. Uh, we took a guided trip here. Um, I must have been a sophomore or junior in high school. Um, I started fly fishing uh, back eighth, ninth grade, kind of as I was getting out of eighth grade, uh, graduating and going on to high school, that summer was kind of my introduction to fly fishing uh, from a buddy of mine who had taken a couple guided trips with his dad. They did a great job going steelhead fishing. Um, so he got me into it in our back pond, just catching bass and sunfish on fly rod. No idea what I was doing, but it was a good time. And I instantly knew that like, this is something that's awesome. So kind of fast forward spring of 2008, I was a freshman in high school and uh, my buddy and his dad and I went out on a guided trip to the lower Niagara River. And I was actually just fishing there a few days ago. Uh, and that was the very first time I ever caught a steelhead. And my uncle was big into it. He talked it up, he talked it up, and, you know, made it seem like it was this incredible thing. And it was, oh, man, get a 13 year old into a steelhead and it changes their life. So kind of as I was progressing through my steelhead career, you know, I started off like everyone else. I got what I could afford and I bought what I could afford and I went fishing as much as I could. Being a high school kid with no driver's license and no, uh, no way to really get to the river besides bribing either my parents or friends or trying to get some uh, couple other buddies interested in it. So high school was a mess. I sucked at fly fishing. I sucked at steelhead fishing. There was a solid two year stretch where unless I was on a guided trip, I didn't catch shit. Uh, and luckily I had a couple guided trips sprinkled in there to like kinda continue the obsession and the passion and the aggression for the sport. Um, and as I kind of graduated, graduated high school, I kind of started figuring things out. It started getting good. It took a couple years to figure out the creeks and the river systems around Buffalo, but I started figuring it out. Fast forward into college, I went to State University of New York at Brockport, which for most of you who don't know who, where the fuck that is, uh, it's in Rochester, New York, which is just east of here. Um, but within 20 minutes, you had some of the bigger rivers that New York is kind of famous for. Uh, Oak Orchard Creek, the, the Jenny, uh, and a couple other big rivers there that have a great run of everything. They got salmon, they got steelhead, they got brown trout, uh, both king and coho salmon. So that was definitely where like, I solidified my skill set. When I wasn't in class and I wasn't out having a good time with friends. I was thinking about fishing. I was going fishing. I had my own car at that point, had some money, had some nice gear and I could get out there and do it. And that was my college experience. It was going to class in waders, hopping in the truck and driving down to the river with two or three hours of daylight left in September, trying to catch those really early run Kings before the whole world got a word that the, the salmon run had started and started flocking to the river. If any of you guys have fished New York's Salmon Run, you guys know how crazy it gets. I mean, it's shoulder to shoulder fishing in every hole and those short rivers that are dammed up, they don't last long. You gotta get in there while you can. So I had a couple buddies um, whose dad was uh, into guiding. He started his own guiding service out of the Salmon River and uh, covered pretty much as much of the state as he could. And, you know, I uh, went through ROTC in college so when I got my orders cut right after my senior year, I was coming back to Fort Drum. Not at all what I wanted, but it turned out to be a great blessing in disguise because it allowed me to continue my fly fishing passion. Uh, it allowed me to be close to home. I was only a few hours down the road. Uh, but more importantly, it set up the stage for my guiding career and really where I am now. So the last three years I've been stationed at Fort Drum as an active duty uh army officer and then on top of that my buddy's dad hired me as a guide uh to work mostly the salmon run just because of how busy it was he didn't want to turn down business it was good put some extra money in my pocket but more importantly i got to teach what i've learned over the last decade um 
and it was very rewarding i loved guiding i loved every day that i was out there even if it was raining even if it was cold and snowing and really just got off of weather um and the clients kind of were a little frustrating or you know they're a little cranky because we got up early or they're getting approached on whatever the situation was i didn't ever not have a good day out there and it was always such a great time when you get when you get a client that's never fly fished or never fly fished for salmon or steelhead into those fish and it's incredible their reaction it's insane so that was kind of um a very rewarding experience and not only that i learned so much of, about fly fishing uh these last few years when when you really sit down to teach someone um how to do it and you only have a day you have a day to figure to have them figure out the rod the lines the reels all this and you only have so much time to try and get them into some fish that are not easy to catch they're not easy to hook either uh but fortunately i was very successful doing it but the bottom line is it taught me so much about fly fishing it taught me so much about myself what i wanted to do uh guiding wise fly fishing wise um and the only drawback to guiding is that i wasn't holding the fly rod uh as much as i wanted to be i'm very passionate about fly fishing so obviously i want to continue to fly fish and teach other people at the same time so that's kind of why i'm going to branch out and do vlogging um on top of that i'm leaving for georgia in a couple months uh, and i'll be there for about six months and then after that i don't know where i'm going the army's going to send me wherever it wants to send me but regardless no matter where it sends me fly fishing will be an option fly fishing for trout for bass even ocean fly fishing it's all going to be an option so i'm kind of formally stepping back from guiding right now taking the focus off that and now i'm turning the attention to the camera and to you guys so this is kind of my formal introduction into the vlogging world i'm going to bring you guys along the journey um, share with you my passion for fly fishing but also share this journey that i'm going on uh, where i go down to georgia i have to try out a whole new state whole new set of water whole new climate everything um, and hopefully go to the pacific northwest maybe alaska someplace that's really known for having a diverse range of species to fly fish for uh, as well as seasons to do it um, so let me formally introduce myself as john hatton this is nixie she'll be tagging along the whole time uh, and luckily this is a uh, a great experience and a great opportunity and hopefully you guys uh, continue to follow me in this journey um i don't know where this road will kind of go I'm not really sure what's going to happen but i'm going to try and stay as consistent as possible um if any of you guys have ever been in the military you know how inconsistent it is and how hard it is to plan and predict anything past two or three weeks out uh so we're going to head up river we're going to walk we're going to go to a couple of the spots that i saw some fish last week um and this river had two kind of good pushes of water the last 48 hours so it's definitely a little bit stained it's a little bit higher than it was last friday and these fish should have spread out a little bit more but very impressed with how many fish i saw considering it's april 18th and um the steelhead season generally wraps up by mid-april but it's been such a cold kind of weird spring that it doesn't really seem to have gotten started yet the water's still really cold uh there's a lot of online reports saying that the spawn's done that it's happened that there's dropbacks and that is the case I, I did pull out a couple dropbacks on friday but i also caught a couple very very fresh fish um that have just been in the river just a couple days so with any luck a few more of those guys have pushed in uh we're gonna try and get some good b-roll footage we're gonna try and get some good action shots i got the camera i got the gopro and i have a whole bunch more stuff coming in the mail but it's not here yet unfortunately so we're making do with what we got.
exactly what we're after, but nice fish, nice start to the day. All right guys, so we're at spot three. Uh, walking up the creek, got a little shallower, a little bit clearer water. See that? And walking up, I saw three fish that all look like steelhead kick up. So they're somewhere in here. I'm gonna change out batteries on the camera. And we're gonna see if we can find them. And we're gonna see if we can uh, get one in the net. Maybe two, maybe all three. Right, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of an update. We went up river. Um, pretty, pretty good hike. We uh, found a couple. Found a couple steelhead. A lot of suckers. Surprisingly, a lot of mountain suckers. Uh, there's always a lot this time of year, but like, very shockingly high amount of suckers. Anyway, we uh, got into one steelhead. Beautiful, nice, probably 30, 30 plus inch steelhead. Uh, I got a little bit of footage on the GoPro, but unfortunately she uh, took off down river and I just couldn't keep up. So we lost, unfortunately. But, but we had fun looking into some suckers, playing with them, and uh, next you got to chase some. And uh, so yeah, now we're uh, working our way back down to the truck and uh, gonna take a little break, have a little snack, take my time getting back there because I got nothing else to do. So. Let's see if we can get one on the way out of here, but uh, still, uh, still a lot of fish in the system. A lot more than I was expecting, so it's good to see this time of year. Alright guys, so, apologize I didn't have the camera rolling. I uh, was walking back down the river and spotted this girl laying in a good rapid there, so I just kind of dropped everything and fished for her. And Nixie helped me land her. Look at that beautiful little groomer. Look at her. Nice and fat, full of eggs still. This beautiful girl. Alright guys, got another one on the way back down. Same fly. Nice little drift uh, that we were fishing earlier. Nixie's gonna help me release him. Nice block, a little banged up. He's been in here a while, but he's starting to get those chrome colors back. Look at that fish. Look at him. Good job. Look at that slab of chrome. Look at that fish. Look at that fish. All right, guys. We just got off the river. Just got uh, waders off, wrapping it up for the day. Four o'clock in the afternoon. We started fishing at 6.30. So Nixie and I are pretty tired. We're gonna go home and sleep. But in the meantime, like this video, share with your friends, leave a comment, let me know what you guys wanna see, and uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and uh, stay, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.